Talmor, Sheshin Mugachi. Talmor is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My gran says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready for a great evil is coming. And death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. The thing that I fought tooth and nail to bring my son into is Dungeons and Dragons. That is the ultimate solution to parenthood. I'm Alexis Ohanian. In my podcast, Business Dad, I'm hoping to open up the conversation about balancing careers and family. I talked to Rain Wilson. I wanted to learn more about Rain's advice to play D&D with your kids. Business Dad is available now, so be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. world and welcome back to another episode of thanks for coming in i'm your host jillian claire i want to talk to you about a podcast that i recently discovered i was listening to my favorite murder and i don't know if it was georgia or karen but somebody brought up um the podcast nothing much happens which is basically bedtime stories for adults And I feel like I'm behind on this. There's several seasons, lots of episodes. There's even a book now. But it is so soothing and relaxing. It is incredible to me how quickly it gets me to fall asleep. I'm the type of person that I lay my head on that pillow and then all of a sudden I'm thinking about something I said when I was 15, new ideas, things I should have done today, things I need to do tomorrow. My brain just doesn't know how to shut off which is hysterical because I can take a nap basically anywhere at any time and be unwakeable. But the second I actually go to lay down, I have the most difficult time falling asleep. And usually I'd play some music or I, you know, get my laptop out and put friends on, new girl, something that's comforting. But um, I've been trying to, I don't have a TV in my room, my bedroom, because I'm trying to limit my screen time. Of course, I just bring in the laptop, so it doesn't really matter, right? I uh, I tricked myself with that one. But the Nothing Much Happens podcast has helped me to eliminate the, the TV at night or the laptop at night. And um, I just put on one episode of the podcast. And before she's done, I'm out. Catherine Nikolai, who does the show, has such a soothing voice And she reads the story twice to you, and the first time is like a little faster, and the second time is slower, and I swear I never make it through the second reading. Anyway, if you are like me and you have trouble sleeping, um, check out Nothing Much Happens. This isn't an ad, by the way. I just, I really love that show. It's so good. So check it out. Today on the show, we have Alondra Delgado. You know her best from Mayans and the CW show All-American. It was a pleasure to get to know her and talk to her. So here's my conversation with Alondra Delgado. All right. Welcome to the show, Alondra. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. How are you? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Are you in uh, Los Angeles as well? Yes, I am. What do you think about this rain? (sighs) so cold it's <laughs> like, oh no <laughs> it's cold but it's also nice I feel like I sleep better when when it's raining yeah because like you want to cuddle and like you just want to like be under the blankets totally yeah. totally uh so you're on a show right now called All American on CW yeah. tell me a little bit about the show and your role on it well um I'm playing Vanessa Montes um, she's a new kid in high school. Um, she's the co- the new head coach's daughter. Um, uh, yeah. So she comes into the show. Um, she had met one of the characters in summer, and she didn't expect to see him again now. So she coming into the show without her wanting. She's bringing a lot of drama and a love triangle happens because of her. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's very Greece. Meet during the summer. 
actually see each other back in school. Yeah, it's true. I hadn't actually thought about that. That's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, so when did this show start for you? When did you audition for it? What was what was the process so for it? I auditioned for it, I think it was on September, mid-September. And um, I got a call, like, almost, it was, like, almost Halloween. So it was, like, a couple of days before Halloween. So wow. when I got the, yeah, I thought I had to book the role because, like, a month had passed. And I'm like, yeah, like, it's, it's not for me, you know? So when right. I got the call, they were like, oh, you booked it. I'm like, wait, like, the character I auditioned <laughs> for or, like, another character? They're like, no, no, you booked it. I'm like, oh, my God. So it was, it was a surprise. <laughs> That's so wild. It's so crazy when those things happen because as actors, we train ourselves to kind of just forget about things. Otherwise, you just sit there and think about it all the time. Exactly. So when yeah, something like, comes back a month later. I know. I always give myself like, oh, a week or two weeks, like max. After that, I'm like, okay, it's fine. On to the next one. We'll get the next one, you know? So for mm -hmm. them to call me a month after, I was like, oh my God. Hey, anything's <laughs> possible, you know? <laughs> I love that. That is so, um, that's so wild. And it just truly shows that you never know what the other side is thinking and what they're doing. Exactly. So yeah. tell me how you got started in acting. I read that you, you were born and raised in Puerto Rico, yes. which is amazing. So when did you come out into LA? Did you decide that you wanted to act when you were still in Puerto Rico? So I started acting when I was seven back home in Puerto Rico. I did my first feature oh, wow. film. And um, ever since that, like every year I was in commercials or TV or, and stuff like that. And um, when I was on my junior year in high school, I was like, well, everyone was like trying to decide and colleges and stuff like that. And I was like, I, I really just want to continue doing acting. That's what I've been doing since I was little. So I want to go. Um, I want to go to L.A. And that's, that's what I want to do. So I went to a summer camp that year. And then on my senior year, I was like, no, yeah, I'm doing this. I want to do my, I always wanted to have a bachelor just because I love school. So same, I, same. <laughs> yeah, I applied uh, to do my bachelor's over here and um, I moved out five years ago, but I moved with my family. So that helped a lot. Oh, that's nice. So your whole family uprooted from Puerto Rico to LA? Yeah, we all moved. Yeah. My, my little brother was still 15, so he finished high school over here, but we all moved. That's amazing. That's a, yeah. that's an incredible support system to have. Yeah, it really helped a lot, you know, because the transition is always difficult and like, like getting comfortable in the environment and everything. So like, I didn't have a lot of friends at first, obviously, but at least I had them. So I had that support. Wow, that is so incredible. Now, you said you started acting when you were seven in Puerto Rico. What is what's the film and television world like there? I mean, I feel like I know nothing about Puerto Rico to begin with, but uh -huh. I'd love to know a little bit about just their entertainment industry down there. Well, like right now, like I believe it has died a lot more. Like before mm -hmm. we used to produce our own telenovelas and stuff like that. Now, like we don't do those anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But there's always like um, a lot of TV uh, being done over there and a lot of uh, movies that go to festivals and stuff like that. So mainly all of my movies went for TV. And um, okay. I had one movie that was on, like, the movie theater. And that was very cool because, like, all of my friends came. I was, like, 13, I think, back in the moment. So, like, all of them came. I was signing autographs in the movies. It was so much fun, I know. That is so sweet. It's so fun when things like that happen to you as a kid because I feel like your sense of wonderment really stays in you when you're a child actor. Because you get yeah. to see all these incredible things and experience all these things that um, other kids don't. And you just kind of have that magical feeling for the rest of your life. Yeah. And in a way, like, it, it helps you understand that, like, it, for me, it was like everything was normal, you know, because it's something that I've been mm -hmm. doing since I was little, you know. So you get more, more comfortable with it and you normalize things and, like, you ground yourself a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Well, especially with a um, a very supportive family like that. Mine was the exact same way. We moved to Los Angeles when I was eight so that I could act. So we nice. both have families that are very supportive. And I know that is a huge thing yeah. as an artist, right? Because if we don't yeah. have that support system behind us, we'll break. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Especially because it's not a stable career, obviously. You, you never know what's going to happen, you know? 
So to have the, your close ones like support you and be like, okay, you go for it, you know, rather than like, are you sure you should do something else and have this as a hobby, you know? So it does help a lot. It does. It does. So you, you moved to LA when you're 18, Are you 18 then when you move or 17? I was, I was 17 and I, I moved like in July, but in August I turned 18. Oh, Hey, are you a Leo? No, I'm a Virgo. My <sighs> mom's a Leo. Are you a Leo? Yes. Hi, Mama Leo. <laughs> I was what? Uh, no, July 25th for me. I'm like um, right, I'm right there. But my mom's a Leo too. She's August 16th. Oh, my mom is a Leo too. <laughs> <laughs> Leos are, are crazy people. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so you move here when you're 17 and then um, do you go to college? Do you finish out your four years yeah. and get your bachelor's? So I did them actually in three because I took summer. Um, to do it faster. So I did my bachelor's in um, fine arts and acting for film. Um, mm. uh, and I finished that like, I guess, like two and a half years ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So and I was doing my bachelor's. Until... I had a part time job. And then yeah. uh, I was still like auditioning and stuff like that. And then I think my last year of college was when I booked my first co star uh, on my end. Okay. Yeah. And then it, that turned into a reoccurring role, right? Yes. And now this in this season three, it turned into a guest star. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. I yeah. love that when that happens, when because you just know that you're doing something right, right? I know. It's like it's a small role and then they keep bringing you back and you're like, oh, wait, they like me. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I was talking to that with my friend the other day because she, she has a co-star as well. And they call her back for the for the new season, and I'm like, that's amazing. And she's like, yeah, I know, but like, I wish it was like a bigger part. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. They keep calling you back, so they like you, you know. Yeah, it means yeah. that they like you, and you're important to the story, which is always exactly. what we always try to do, right? We want to be important mm -hmm. to the story and what we're what we're creating with the other people on set. So when you keep be being brought back, I mean, what a yeah. compliment. Exactly. Yeah. I remember the first time I watched uh, Mayans, like my first like couple of scenes were like very short. It was just like 10 seconds. But like, I remember sitting down and being like, you know what? Like, I always said that like, my dream was to be in national TV. So if we think mm -hmm. about it, technically, hey, I did it. And even if it's 10 seconds, yeah. I did it. I am on national TV, you know, which is crazy. People like, people never do it sometimes, you know? Yeah. I mean, there are actors who have never booked a co-star role yeah. or a guest star role. I mean, there's there's people who have been at this for, you know, decades and are still not where they want to be. Yeah. I mean, I feel like as as artists, we it's hard for us to get where we want to be, right? Because there's always something more, something bigger yeah. that we want. But I mean, any role really is such a blessing because, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of us. And so to yeah. book that one role is huge. Mm -hmm. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch. And organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. <laughs> Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. 
go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. You can shop from anywhere doing pretty much anything. You might shop while working, eating, or even listening to this podcast. And however you shop, we all know and love the thrill of the hunt. But do you also know how to get the thrill of the best deals? Because Rakuten shoppers do. With Rakuten, they get the deals they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Nike, and even Expedia if you're looking to get some travel in. And getting cash back doesn't mean you have to miss out on sales because those can just be stacked right on top. It's easy to use and based on a simple idea. Stores pay Rakuten for sending them shoppers, and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Yeah. So was Mayans... Mayans was the first co-star that you booked. And then what happened after Mayans? Were you just auditioning a lot? You had finished college, yeah, I was, right? Yeah. And Mayans, um, when I did, I think, the second episode or something like that, I was already, like, SAC eligible. And that, like, that's a huge deal, too. You know, like, if you're not SAC, you, sometimes you're not even allowed to go to, like, big auditions. So, like, it mm-hmm. sucks. So, like, that was, like, my main goal, like... I was like, oh my God, I have to be sack. And it sucked too because like I had been acting in Puerto Rico since I was seven, but over there is different. So I didn't have sack credits for all of those stuff. Um, so after That's my- so interesting. Inter- I know. And I was like- So there's, I'm like, there, is there no union then down in Puerto Rico for acting? Well, apparently, like I, I searched or whatever, apparently there is. But I just okay. guess like, I don't know if I was like a child or whatever, like I just didn't get the- the sad credits for it so Wild. when I got Mayans I started to go to more auditions and stuff like that and then I booked Vida on Stars mm. and that's oh, wow. when I became SAG and after those two shows like like a lot of more doors started opening a lot of more great auditions so yeah, yeah they always say like all you need like it's a, it's a little role you know and like now even more with All American you know yeah I mean, that sounds like such a fun show to be on. Do you guys, do you film in LA or is that one of the shows that films in Georgia? No, we film here. We film here in Warner Brothers. That's like seven minutes away from my house. Oh God, don't you love that when the studio is I know. And you're just like, I can stroll to work. This is fantastic. Because <laughs> you don't get that in LA. People don't understand if they've never been to Los Angeles. It is such a rough drive everywhere across town. Like if you live in it Burbank is. and you have to film at Sony, you're you're screwed. <laughs> it is like everywhere you go, it's at least thirty minutes. At least but, it, it makes me think yeah. of a uh, of Clueless when the dad's like, everywhere takes twenty minutes in Los Angeles. I'm like, well, it's thirty yeah. now, but yes. <laughs> yeah my oh, every gosh. time my family comes here they're like oh my god that's so far away and I'm like really no it's just 30 minutes it's close that's like it's our easy. normal <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh so how many episodes of All American have you done now are you are you guys still filming are, is this yeah, the first season filming. okay we're still filming um I we're filming right now my fifth episode that I've been on wow yeah that's so exciting. Um, and Greg Berlanti is is the producer on that one, right? Yes. I am obsessed with everything he does. I feel like he is one of the best producers out there right now. Yeah. I love All American. Like before booking it, like I was a fan. I, I finished season two and I remember like, oh my God, I can't wait for season three. And then, so when I got the audition, I, I was like, oh my God, I think it was one of the auditions that I felt the most pressure. Just because yeah. I really wanted to be on the show because I love the show. So. Right. So you, you auditioned for this show during quarantine. What, did you yeah. ever meet anybody in person or was it all over Zoom? No, it, no, it was not even Zoom. It, it was a self-tape. That's it? That's it. I didn't even get a call back or anything. It was a self-tape. Oh my god! I know. 
<laughs> that's that's why, wild. Yeah, that's why I was so sure that I hadn't booked it because like it was a guest star reoccurrence. I was like, at least they're going to do callbacks or like something, yeah. you know? So I was like, yeah, definitely I'm not going to get it. And I had seen like um, I follow all of them on Instagram and stuff like that. And I had seen that they were already like filming season three. So I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So when they called me, I was like, wait, what? So like I booked it. <laughs> Yeah, that is so bizarre to me that they didn't even do a callback. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's that had to have been even more shocking then, because obviously it's shocking when you book something to begin with, but then to to not have even done anything but the self tape. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, they call me, and it, I think it was like they called me. I think a Thursday, and then Friday I had to get tested. Um, we did fitting on Monday and then Tuesday we were filming already. Wild. It's, it's just, it's crazy to me that sometimes it happens that quickly in this industry too, right? Like you don't yeah. hear from them for a month and then all of a sudden in four days you're on set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. But that is the television world too, right? It's, it's less time to prepare for the role. You're just, yeah. it's more of a moving train. Yeah, it definitely is. And things change so fast. And like the same day, oh, they change this. They change the lines or stuff like that. So it's like, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, clearly, you know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I read that you <laughs> I read that you also uh, wrote and produced a short film. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Um, so it was called By Gone. Um, and it's funny because like... Um, I wanted to write something different. I always like, I'm very up for like, oh, I want strong leading roles, of women. And like, I'm very like, I want to change the like, not having like the same like, oh, pretty face and pretty girl. And like, you know, like I want something like, I wanted something rough and raw and like something different. Cause like, you know, we, mm-hmm. we women like come in every single aspect and like sometimes we're not all dressed up and dolled up, you know? So it's true. I morning, mean, the entire quarantine, it's been just no makeup and a bun. <laughs> For real. Um, so this uh, one morning I woke up and it wasn't like a nightmare because I don't remember what like what the actual thing was. I just woke up and I visualized myself waking up with blood on my hands. Mm-hmm. And and like I, I, I felt inspired by that mental picture. And then like I just sat down and I started writing. So I came mm-hmm. out with the concept of like this girl wakes up with blood in her hands. She doesn't know where her boyfriend is at. Um, today is like the day that they're gonna get um they're gonna do like their legal wedding. So like and she has to realize like what happened. I woke up hungover, I don't know where I am, and I have blood in my hands. So I have to figure out what, what happened last night and where's my boyfriend. And um mm-hmm. that was about it. That was the idea that I had. I started writing it and then um we shot it we did it and um i sent it out for a couple of festivals it was my first short film and it got accepted into a bunch and then wow. one of them i got nominated for best actress and i bought and i won best actress in the aston micro short film festival and wow. i was like oh my god <laughs> so yeah i'm like okay so that has gotten me excited and now i want to write more you know yeah, I was going to ask, is this going to inspire you to write more and produce more? Definitely. Like, I really would love to do the feature film version of it. Oh. Yeah. Well, now that you have a proof of concept and clearly people like it, maybe you can get some investors yeah. behind you. Yeah, I know. It's like sometimes like, you know, you actually have to sit down and you actually have to 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 work a lot you know and sometimes i Mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i want to do this i want to do that but you actually have to like take two hours a day to sit down and like really work on it you know i'm the same way i have so many ideas all the time and then i have to like really try to hone myself in and be like okay focus we're gonna take two hours today and do this yeah (laughs) and time passes by so fast too and especially when you're trying to concentrate and you're just like oh god what happened (laughs) I know. I know. But <laughs> did you um do you, do you see yourself directing ever too? I someone has like someone asked me that recently and I I I do cuz I love I love writing and I love just like the fact of like directing is I love the fact that you can connect 
to the people and like in another level and you actually like see everything like evolve and you you have so much control of like how everything develops and like how the story becomes like comes to life you know so that's definitely that something that I would like to do but I first want to focus on writing there's so Mm -hmm. many other stories that like I would like to tell and like being like Hispanic and Puerto Rican like there's so many like aspects of my culture that I would like to like show to the world you know yeah and I think it's incredibly important that we see more films like that yeah so speaking of um movies and auditions and everything else that we've been talking about on this show I like to have actors tell me audition stories that either went awry or something that they really wanted that they didn't get or funny audition stories um do you have any audition stories that you'd like to share with us well actually I did, uh, when was this? I think this was, was last Thursday. I did a self-tape. I was auditioning for a pilot, and I had two characters to audition for. So I received one of the breakdowns first, and I'm like, okay, whatever, I prepare for it. And then my manager was like, oh, they actually want you to read for this one as well. So when he sent me the email, it was like, uh, you know, like in the breakdown, you have all the characters. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why. I read that I was auditioning for this character and I was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, that's a little weird because um, out of the two sisters, I think I would have been better for the younger one rather than the older one. But hey, okay, it's fine. So I prepare myself, whatever. I go to the self-tape and um, I'm like, okay, let's do the first one. And I finished the first one that I have memorized and it was great. And then we were going on to the second character. And then she's like, okay, can you email me the site? And I'm like, perfect. So when I emailed the site, I realized that in the PDF, it says the name of the other sister, the younger one. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, did I mess this up? So then I go back to the the audition email and I'm like, oh my God, it was always the younger sister. (laughs) And I'm like, I have 20 minutes left to like finish this. And I'm like, "Um, can you give me just five minutes? I have to go to the bathroom and memorize this. And it was like two scenes, four pages. And I was like, oh my God. So, and she so had another You totally switched me. them. Yeah. And I didn't even have the clothes for that because, like, I, I had dressed up properly to the other sister. So I'm like, oh my God. So, like, I took the jacket off because the other sister was more going. So, I'm like, I took the jacket off. I'm in the bathroom. I called my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, like, I don't know what to do. But, like, obviously, I was a little bit familiar with the lines because I have been reading right. them. Right. So, I'm like, okay. So, I read them, like, a couple of times, whatever. I'm like, okay, let's do it. So, I went and I did it. But I was like, it, like, like thankfully, like, I memorized lines very fast. So, thankfully, I was able to memorize them. But I, I was like, I can't believe I just did this. <laughs> I received the audition on Monday. So, like, I have four days. And I'm like, oh, my God. A total <laughs> user error. <laughs> terrible (laughs) oh god that's so funny though that you I love too that you said that you were like but I should be auditioning for the younger character and it was the younger character the whole time (laughs) I didn't know what happened there but I was like oh but it's one of those moments where you're like like thankfully it was a self-tape imagine if it was like in person audition and you're like Mm -hmm. okay you know, but those are things that we yeah. have to do sometimes out of the bloom. We're like, okay, we're doing this now. Let's do it. It's true. I mean, that is um, the one of one of the good things about this quarantine has been being able to do our auditions all from home and yeah. mess up as many times as we want and yeah. send in the perfect take. <laughs> yes. I think it'll be very interesting when we go back into rooms and we're all trying to figure out how to socialize again and also Hello. audition. <laughs> we're yeah. going to be like, hi, I am. Wait, what? Who Do I shake your hand? Do I not shake your Who am I? <laughs> I know. I know. It's definitely going to be interesting. And like now, too, because like we feel like, oh, OK, we can mess up because like we have time, you know. So mm-hmm. but like once we go back, we can not mess up, you know. Nope. Nope, yes, there is no it. more messing up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been so wonderful to talk to you, and I can't wait yeah. to see all the amazing things you're going to do and write and act in. Um, yeah. Where can people follow you on your journey on social media? 
Um, you can follow me on Instagram, I Alondra Delgado. Um, yeah, over there. But thank you for having me. So it's been so much fun too. I feel like it's so much earlier than what it is. I like just you- realized like it's twelve thirty. I know. I think it's the the time change and the fact that yeah. it's rainy. I know it feels like it should still be like I don't know. Like feels um, like it should be like, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> feels like I should still be drinking my morning tea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, you are welcome back to the show whenever you have something new to promote. It was so, so nice talking to you, and I wish you all the luck. Thank you so much. Same to you. Thank you. Thanks again to Alondra for coming on the show. I'm super excited to see what she comes up with next in her writing journey and her acting journey. She has such a a great future ahead of her, and uh, I think it'll be great to see what she does. Tune in next week for another episode where I will talk to another actor and share, hopefully, another embarrassing story. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to it right now. You can leave us a rating and a review to help us out. Follow us on social media to see exclusive videos from the interview. And as always, thanks for coming in. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Buntwine, erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I study the secrets of the divine plagues and uncover the blasphemous truth that ours is not a loving God and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Buntwine, wherever podcasts are available. <laughs>